good question. Maybe some of you are wondering, you know, exactly what went down um, the early morning that Patrick died. Um, Patrick, we were all in Michigan. We were there actually. Um, my brother, my older brother, had passed away in March, and we were there um, uh, to. We were having a memorial for my brother, and um, so we. My family, our whole, my whole family was there. We were all staying at my mom's house. There were 19 of us sleeping in her house. And Patrick had a really awesome day. He has two cousins. My sister's boys are Patrick's age. He has two cousins that he's very close to. And we just had a wonderful time. Um, I'm from Michigan, and we, my house, my mom's house is right on Lake Michigan, and so we're really close to all the beaches and all that. And, Patrick spent the day body surfing in Lake Michigan. The waves were pretty big that day, and he loved to do that. It was one of his very favorite things to do. And then um, he went and got, they went and got ice cream and walked around the town. It's kind of a little touristy town, so it's a really neat town. But he was doing everything he absolutely loved to do. And they ordered pizza that night before, like at midnight or something like that. Patrick loved pizza, he loved ice cream, and he loved chocolate. So I think he had all those things that day, and then he loved to be with his cousins, and he loved Lake Michigan. Um, about 1 o'clock in the morning, um, he tapped me on the shoulder. I was actually still out talking to um, Patrick's uncle, uh, my brother-in-law. And he tapped me on the shoulder, and he said, good night, Mom. And he went down to the basement to go to sleep. There were several people down sleeping down in the basement. About 10 minutes later, I went up to my room upstairs to get ready for bed, and I was in the bathroom and Patrick came into the bathroom and he said, Mom, I'm having an asthma attack. He said it very, very calmly. Um, I don't, you know, was, I couldn't really see him very well. It was pretty dim in the bathroom. Um, so I didn't really, I couldn't really tell how advanced the asthma attack was, but Mike and I kind of have this, this um, protocol of when Patrick's having an asthma attack, I immediately go run and call it 911 and Mike starts to assist Patrick with nebulizer or whatever else um, we, we can get on, get on him as fast as possible. Um, do you want to take it from there? Okay. Um, so I was in bed, and so he barged in the room, because in my backpack is where you have medicine. Um, actually, he had some pills. In fact, specifically the question, he actually had a nebulizer right next to him in bed. This was such a severe attack, you know, he couldn't even put it together. And what really ended up happening is all his previous asthma attacks, he was able to get some air. His chest would heave. He could get air. This time it was closed. So there was nothing. And so we got the pills out and tried to put him in, and he couldn't even swallow. And put the, and him in, and I said, Pat, you should be able to. And he shot it, and like, the air is all the air. He literally couldn't breathe. So I personally think it's, it was a, an incredibly severe asthma attack. I, I don't know if it was something more than that, like a respiratory attack or whatever, but it was where he you never know, breathing, usually it would choke up, but here it just shut down. And I'll just interject for a minute. Um, Patrick had his nebulizer and had an EpiPen, which are two asthmatic must haves. Um, they were in his duffel bag next to him uh, where he was sleeping. And, um, you know, he didn't have the thought to bring them up with him or anything like that. Um, but actually, the situation with Patrick is the asthma attack was so severe that he was not getting any air in, so even a nebulizer wouldn't have, wouldn't have done anything for Patrick. I don't know about the EpiPen. You know, we just didn't have that available. Um, I just think that it, I just think that it was Patrick's time. I think the Lord just wanted to bring him home. It was just, it was just so fast and so severe. There was nothing we could medically do, and the doctors confirmed that the only way we would have been able to save Patrick at the house if we could have put a ventilator in, you know, inserted a ventilator in Patrick, and, you know, we don't have one of those on hand, and we don't know how to do that, and um, so I, I think that, I think Patrick died at our house that night. I, um, he was in the hospital at home for five days. I was looking at him in the hall, um, and I just looked at him, and I, and I just thought, Well, and as I experience this, as I reflect back, I mean, you know, even in this situation, God is great. I mean, God is just so gracious because 
lot of tax, asthma attacks previous to that have been some sort of um, variable that we can control. You know, whether there's sugar, sugar or dairy, which is very sensitive to. And those oftentimes had a lot to do with the asthma attacks. And this attack is so severe, we could have the comfort knowing that we didn't do anything wrong. That, I mean, God was just so gracious to say, Mike and Tamara, this was beyond you. It's, it's not about what your actions were or were not. This is me. This is my plan. And take a step back and have all your cousins here, 19 of them here, I got to see Pat the last weekend here. And we've been able to talk about the Bible with our cousins who we've been praying for for years, but we're never able to up until that point. But this opened the door to that. And we know now that his two cousins um, and his um, uncle have crossed that line of faith and are believers. And one reason why is because we were able to openly share the gospel in a way that could not have been shared in this situation.